In this video, we will talk about preparedness. Preparedness means to be prepared for any expected disaster. It's a sort of risk control. You think about any disaster that, that might happen to you and your organization and they take all the precautions that help you face it and decrease damage as far as possible and train stuff. In this video, we will speak about external preparedness. In another video, we talked about internal preparedness. For more videos, visit my Facebook page, Healthcare Quality. By external disasters, we mean any situation outside the hospital with a threat to the health of the community or when the normal health services are interrupted and when there are likely to be so many casualties that special arrangements are necessary to deal with them. Examples of external disasters are Transportation accidents with mass casualties, mass community food poisoning, industrial accidents in a chemical manufacturing plant, explosions, natural disasters such as flood, earthquakes, and hurricanes. The hospital develops, maintains, and tests an emergency management program to respond to emergencies and natural, natural or other disasters that have the potential of occurring within the community. Community emergencies and disasters may directly involve the hospital such as damage to patient care areas as a result of an earthquake, tsunami, or terrorist attack that keeps staff from coming to work. The development of the program should begin by identifying the types of disasters that are likely to occur in the hospital's region and what the impact of these disasters would have on the hospital. For example, a hurricane or tsunami is more likely to occur in areas where the ocean is nearby, but unlikely to occur in countries surrounded by land. While damage or mass casualties as a result of war or a terrorist attack, on the other hand, could potentially occur in any hospital. It's just as important to identify the effects of a disaster as it is to identify the types of disasters. This helps in planning the strategies that are needed in the event that a disaster occurs. For example, what's the likelihood that a natural disaster such as an earthquake will affect water and power supply? Could an earthquake prevent staff from responding to disaster, either because roads are blocked or because they are or their family members are also victims of the event? In such situations, staff personnel responsibilities may be in, conf in conflict with the hospital requirements for responding to an emergency. In addition, hospitals need to identify their role within the community. For example, what resources will the hospital be expected to provide to the community in the event that a disaster occurs? And what communication methods will be used within the community? To respond effectively, the hospital develops a program 
to manage such emergencies. Disaster Control Center, a chosen place in the hospital where disaster control team assemble to manage the disaster event. Personal pool, a room where a pool of employees who do not have a specifically assigned role in a disaster report to be deployed as required. Field triage, a team consisting of one surgeon and senior ER registered nurse may be sent to give medical care by fully equipped ambulance. Initial triaging and the tagging of patients will occur at the scene of the disaster. Triage tag, color coded identification tag applied to a disaster casualties, giving instant triaging information and category of the victim. Patients will be present at the hospital already tagged, and the triage officer at the hospital will decide whether the category required reassessing or to process the patient at the initial tag. Primary triage is a system of sorting and prioritizing casualties before they are sent to the relevant care areas. An area outside the emergency room used for collecting casualties when they first arrive at the hospital. Triage zones, classification of casualties and the areas which are designated for secondary triage and treatment inside the hospital. Red zone, immediate care patients whose condition is critical and whose care cannot wait. Care should be within five minutes. They are the first patients to receive care in the hospital. Yellow zone, urgent care patients whose condition require care within 5 to 30 minutes. Green zone, minor care walking wounded patients whose care can be delayed. Black zone, casualties who have been declared dead. Discharge transfer inpatient team, a team of clinical staff assigned to assess the hospital inpatients and organize for their discharge or transfer as appropriate to ensure there are enough admission beds for any disaster casualties. Disaster supplies, supplies of equipment and consumables to be kept in named departments to be used during an external disaster. The procedure. First, plan activation. The reception switchboard will receive a call from an outside agency stating that transfer to a disaster situation is in process and the hospital is required to participate. The switchboard will transfer the call to the senior ER physician on duty and then notify the nursing supervisor on duty who will go directly to the ER. The senior ER physician will discuss the requirements from the people requesting the hospital involvement and discuss it with the nursing supervisor on duty and if the situation warrants communicate with the hospital director or administrator in call who will activate code yellow if it is deemed necessary. Announce via the overhead paging system three consecutive times at one minute intervals. Attention, attention, code yellow, code yellow, code yellow. All staff report 
to their duty stations. Notification of staff. Employees living on site will be called first. They will use the telephones in the disaster control center to notify other personnel living off sites and remain in the casualty until the external disaster situation is completed. ICU, the intensive care unit, will be staffed by their normal staff, plus the following who will carry out patient's care and their responsibilities according to their action course. Consultant anesthetist, anesthetic specialist, cardiologist, four additional registered nurses. OR. The operating room will be staffed by their normal staff, plus the following, who will carry out patient care and the responsibilities according to their action cards. Consultant anesthetist, anesthetic specialist, consultant surgeon, surgical specialist, four additional registered nurses. General units. When a code yellow is announced, it's expected that all other units will activate their unit responsibilities and individual responsibilities as per their unit action cards. Critic of code. After the code has been terminated, the administrator on duty schedules a meeting with the administrative staff who participated and staff who would be able to critic departments to evaluate the code response. The safety officer conducts the critic meetings. The evaluation should include documented critic of the actions taken during the code, identification of equipment, training and facility issues, identification of policies and procedures that need revision. Recognition of staff who performed in an, in an outstanding manner. Identification of procedures that worked particularly well and recommendations for changes to improve the emergency preparedness plan. What are the responsibilities? The Chief Executive Officer, Chief Operating Officer, or designee, Administrator on Duty, or Chief of Nursing, or Safety Officer, are authorized to activate and terminate a disaster code, and to set up a command center during an emergency situation. The person in charge determines the resources required to effectively manage a disaster situation, including alternative rules and responsibilities for hospital personnel. The security department is responsible for assuring that only essential personnel have access to the disaster or treatment areas. Report to Disaster Control Center and take control of all hospital entrances, control traffic flow of individuals within the hospital. The safety officer reports to the command center to gather information and reports to the code area to render assistance. The safety officer or designee is responsible for conducting a critical drill. Triage director, responsible for treatment and triage activities within the disaster or treatment area, and for communicating with the command center as necessary. Department heads are responsible for implementing their department emergency preparedness plans for the effective management of services provided to patients during emergencies, 
and for assuming that staff attends the required in services. Staff roosters include a listing of all department employees, the employee's name, title, and telephone number is documented on the rooster. Residential employee who lives the farthest from the hospital is listed last. Staff roosters are updated whenever there are staffing changes or at least on each quarter. Staff roosters are to be placed in Department Emergency Preparedness Manual with a copy to communications. The Safety Committee provides support to the safety officer through implementation review and revision of emergency preparedness plan. It also offers sight and technically assessed in development and the provision of training, drills, exercise scenarios, and response to an actual emergency. Coordination with emergency response organizations and a critic of disaster code drills. The communication department announced implementation of emergency code when so instructed and contacts external agencies as appropriate. Admission office. No patient admission is allowed until clear instructions are provided by the head of the disaster control center. Dietary department head or designees will call upon their own personnel as needed after reporting to disaster control center. Prepare to serve nourishments to impatients and personnel as need arise. Clear hallways of all tray cars and be responsible for setting up menus in disaster situation and maintain adequate supplies. Maintenance department head or designee will call upon their own personnel as needed after reporting to disaster control center. Maintain full operations of all facilities. Maintain any equipment provided as a part of this emergency procedure at all times. Housekeeping and laundry department heads also call in their own personnel as needed after reporting to disaster control center. And be sure all hallways or traffic areas are clear of cleaning cars, equipments, and etc. Operating room and anesthesia will keep list of supplies on hand and be prepared to process additional sterile supplies quickly if the need will arise, as outlined in OR and anesthesia emergencies. Notify anesthetists who will maintain adequate anesthesia and drug supplies. Medical imaging. The technicians on duty will be considered the designee of the X-ray department and will report to disaster control center for further information. Laboratory and blood bank department head or designee will call in their own personnel as needed after reporting to Disaster Control Center. They have arrangements made to obtain additional blood, equipment, and supplies from other hospitals as needed. Materials Management and Purchasing Department Head or Designee will call in their own personnel as needed after reporting to Disaster Control Center. They should be prepared to supply all departments with needed supplies. Pharmacy, report to Disaster Control Center and then remain in department. 
they should have a list of drug supplies that can provide the hospital with extra supplies when needed. Training and education. Upon arrival at the hospital, all new employees must undertake safety orientation that includes external disaster plan as per our disaster manuals. Annual external disaster training and the drills will then be mandatory for all employees. Individual department training and the drills will be included in this training. The objectives, scope, performance and effectiveness of this plan are evaluated annually. Thank you.